For many that do not understand clearly, it should be understood that we are in the last days. Based upon my many conversations with others, it seems that many do not realize it because they pretty much ignore the book of Revelation. I believe it is something that needs to be reviewed. As we read it over and over, new revelations are made known to us, but nonetheless, it needs to be discussed and reviewed. The book of Revelation starts with the Apostle John introducing us to what we will be reading and why. It says, The revelation of Yahshua HaMashiach, which Elohim gave him, him being Yeshua, to show his servants, things which must shortly take place. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of Elohim and to the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach, to all things that he saw. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are in it, for the time is near. John, in his writing to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Yahshua HaMashiach, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and has made us kings and priests to his Elohim and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says Yahweh, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Yeshua HaMashiach, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of Elohim and for the testimony of Yeshua HaMashiach. I was in the spirit on the day of Yahweh, and I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. What you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, to Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and to Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me, and having turned I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man, clothed with the garment down to the feet, and girded about the chest with a golden band. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as it refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars, out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead, but he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. Write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which will take place after this. The mystery of the seven stars, which you saw in my right hand, and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands, which you saw, are the seven churches. John was exiled to the island of Patmos, an island used by Rome to exile criminals. Being a follower of Yahshua, John was considered a criminal and was exiled. His exile was used as an effort to silence the word of Elohim and John's testimony as being a witness of Yahshua. So John is writing a letter to the seven churches in the Roman province of Asia. It's not the Asia that you may think of today when looking at a world map. This area is what we know today as Turkey. The seven churches fit within a square 50 miles on each side and their names were given in order going clockwise from the southwest. Yahshua appeared to him and told him to do this. The first chapter in what you just heard is simply an introduction to what the rest of the book will contain. Remember, the church is the assembly of believers in Yahshua. The testimony of Yahshua was growing. There was no more Israel to write to any longer. The Jews were driven out in 70 AD when the Roman general Titus destroyed the temple and the city of Jerusalem. The next two chapters, chapters 2 and 3, are messages that Yahshua has specifically for the church. So these are messages that everyone that says that they believe in Yahshua and are a member of his church should read. 
I often hear from others that I testify to that I shouldn't minister to them because they are saved and that my job should be to minister to only those that do not know Yahshua. I found that they often say this because they do not read these two chapters. These messages are not for unbelievers, but specifically to believers of Yahshua. These are messages directly from Yahshua. They are what he wants believers in him to know. He has many good things to say, but also many harsh things as well. The thing about it is that many believers today can be associated with one of these seven churches. So what you should do with this beginning message is review his words and do a self-analysis of your walk with him and make sure you are not guilty of the things he speaks harshly against while also making sure you are also doing the things he is pleased with. Let's begin. The Loveless Church, Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things, says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place, unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. The city of Ephesus was a very important city in the province of Asia Minor. It was both the religious and commercial center of that area. This is the city where Paul had his great ministry and wrote his epistle we know as Ephesians. Ephesus was a center for pagan worship. The Temple of Diana stood during this time period. Remember, she was the mother goddess of the Romans, the goddess of fertility. If you don't understand anything about the mother goddess, please watch part one of my History of Religion series for more information. The Temple of Diana was mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter 19, verses 27 and 28. It says, So not only is this trade of ours in danger of falling into disrepute, but also the temple of the great goddess Diana may be despised, and her magnificence destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worship. Now when they heard this, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. The church of Ephesus was obviously surrounded by pagans. Yahshua speaks and explains that he knows their works and that they cannot bear those that are evil. The church of Ephesus was battling against evil. They did not tolerate it and spoke up against it. They persevered and labored for his name. But Yahshua said that even though they've done this well, he still holds something against them, and that is that they've lost their first love. Remember in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22? Teacher, what is the greatest commandment in the law? Yahshua said to him, you shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. You see, the first love that they've lost was love. He tells them to remember from where they have fallen. When the church of Ephesus was first started, Paul wrote to them in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 and 16. He said, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Adon Yeshua, and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. You see, they were commended for their love. The Apostle Paul in his epistle strongly commanded them to grow in love. Yahshua wants them to repent and change their behavior. He wants them to go back to their way of life they had before they departed from their first love. He again talked about their good. They hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans like he also did. The Nicolaitans were heretics that troubled the churches. Their teachings and practices were immoral and idolatrous, and the church of Ephesus hated it, as did Yahshua. The charge against the church of Ephesus can be found within many of us. We live in a horrible, wicked generation where everything wrong is said to be right and everything right is said to be wrong. Many of us fight against evil all the time. We started off with a sincere love for Yahshua and wanted to build his church. But as we continued to speak against evil, we became more combative and walked less in love. 
It's understandable how we got here. We hate evil and don't tolerate it. But what can sometimes happen is that fighting too much can remove our walk in love. You want to combat evil so bad you forget to walk in sincere love. Learn your lesson from this. Remember, he knows you're faithful to him. He commends you for your good works in his name. But if you are not walking in love, your faithfulness is pointless and in vain. Continue to fight evil and have no tolerance for wickedness, but always do it from a position of love. You'll be fine. The Persecuted Church Revelation chapter 2 verses 8 through 11 And to the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things, says the first and the last, who was dead and came to life. I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. This persecuted church does not have anything against them. They were just a church that suffered. They went through tribulation and poverty. Yahshua tells them they are rich though because of their faith. They are going to suffer for their faith. Like Polycarp, a bishop of Smyrna, a student of the Apostle John. He was burned alive for his faith in 155 AD. Yahshua tells them of their tribulation but not to have fear. This may not be something many Americans can understand right now because life has not fully changed yet. But there are true believers all over the world that are being persecuted right now because of their faith. Believers in the Middle East and in Asia, like the persecuted church in China, that are suffering very much for their belief and testimony of Yahshua. Please keep your faith. Remain strong and just focus on Him. Do not fear. Read this letter over and over and just remember this is a test of your faith. Remain strong and persevere. You will be given a crown of life. Keep moving forward. He also speaks of Jews that are not Jews, but of the synagogue of Satan. We'll come back to that. The Compromising Church Revelation chapter 2, verse 12 through 17 And to the angel of the church of Pergamos write, These things, says he who has the sharp two-edged sword, I know your works, and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name, and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed among you, where Satan dwells. But I have a few things against you, because you have those who hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you also have those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which things I hate. Repent, or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone, and on the stone a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. The city of Pergamos was an epicenter for paganism. During the time of the Apostle John, Pergamos was a very large religious center. It had great pagan temples like the Temple of Athena, and it also held the greatest library of the pagan world. There was a great temple to Caesar Augustus and an altar to Zeus, as well as a temple to Dionysus. This was a pagan epicenter, so it's understood why Yahshua mentions it as Satan's throne. Those temples I mentioned are in ruins today, but there are still markers that show where they were. Some of the church of Pergamos held faith in Yahshua and did not deny him. But there were others that compromised. The doctrine of Balaam is explained in the Old Testament. You can read about it in Numbers chapter 22 through chapter 25. Balak hired Balaam to turn the hearts of Israel away from Yahweh. Apparently, this was also happening here in Pergamos. This can be a lot of us unknowingly. I know many people today liken this modern day church to the church of Laodicea, which we will get to. But many of us are guilty of the charges of the church in Pergamos. You have no idea how many pastors and bishops are like Balaam. They have been hired to draw people away from their faith in Yahshua, but covertly. They have compromised the word and promoted wickedness in many ways. And many of today's churches have fallen in their traps because they are not reading the word on their own.
Do not be of this compromising church. Today in this world, Satan's throne can be in many different places, and it's a high probability that you live amongst it and are sitting and learning under teachers that are charged to draw you away from faithful worship in Yahshua. Be careful. This is going to require some self-reflection and analysis. You may need to ask hard questions and review all things you've done in the name of Yahshua. Make sure your faith is strongly rooted in the word and not rooted in just what someone has taught you the word says. There's a high probability if you attend many of the churches today, you are partly who Yahshua is speaking to in this letter. Read your Bibles and hold fast to your faith. The Corrupt Church Revelation chapter 2 verses 18 through 29 and to the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things, says the son of Elohim, who has eyes like a flame of fire, and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you, because you allow that woman Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality, and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality, and she did not repent. Indeed, I will cast her into a sickbed, and those who commit adultery with her into great tribulation, unless they repent of their deeds. I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he who searches the mind and hearts. And I will give to each one of you according to your works. Now to you, I say, and to the rest in Thyatira, as many as do not have this doctrine, who have not known the depths of Satan, as they say, I will put on you no other burden. But hold fast what you have till I come. And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. He shall rule them with a rod of iron. They shall be dashed to pieces like the potter's vessels, as I also have received from my father. And I will give him the morning star. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is a corrupt church. They had love, service, faith, and patience, but he had things against them that will still be a problem for them. Now this woman Jezebel is not the same Jezebel we read about in the Old Testament, but she was guilty of the same actions. She was teaching and seducing his servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols, yet she called herself a prophetess. She wasn't teaching to other pagans, but she infiltrated herself into the church and caused corruption. Those who fell for her seduction and committed adultery with her would experience great tribulation. This is not the great tribulation, but just much trouble in their lives. This church is very similar to the church of Pergamos, and much of what I said about that church applies to this one as well. I would just add that the spirit of Jezebel is very much a thing. I speak on this in part seven of my History of Religion series. Beware of this spirit, when I read this letter in Revelation, I immediately think of Beyonce and those who follow her. She's a Jezebel, and at one time I remember she presented herself as a Christian, but then promoted pure immorality to those who follow her. Or people like Oprah Winfrey, who also spoke of herself as a Christian, but promoted her wickedness to all her followers. The Jezebel that you may be encountering is not limited to inside the church. When you follow these people, they directly remove you from your faith and you are committing adultery. So if you follow these people, you are guilty, but it's not just limited to them. They come across as believers in Yahshua, but promote to you entertaining wickedness. Beware and remove yourself from this wickedness. The Dead Church, Revelation chapter 3, verses 1 through 6. And to the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things says he who has the seven spirits of Elohim and the seven stars. I know your works that you have a name that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before Elohim. Remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. You have a few names even in Sardis who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This church is very easily explained. They are dead. 
there is no more faith in them. He knew of them, he knows that there was a church in Sardis, but the reality is that they were dead. They either no longer believed fully, or their faith was unrecognizable. They did not stand up against evil. They were dead. Their faith was dead. They acted as if they were a church by their name, but there was nothing in them. They knew and believed in Yahshua, but it wasn't strong. The only thing that they can do is strengthen their faith. This is a large group of people today. It's highly likely that many in this church wouldn't even watch this video. They don't believe. They like the idea of saying they are believers, but that's as far as they go. Nothing about their lives resembles that of a believer, and they aren't even conflicted that they are wrong. They are a dead church. He says to them that he will come upon them as a thief. If you are this dead church, he is talking to you. You will miss him. Find your faith in him again. Read your Bible. Watch my History of Religion series. Be strong. Don't be a follower of the weak. Stop filling your flesh with garbage. Grow your strength back in him and become reborn in your spirit. Do not be of this dead church. The Faithful Church. Revelation chapter 3 verses 7 through 13. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things says he who was holy, he who is true, he who has the key of David, he who opens and no one shuts, and shuts and no one opens. I know your works. See, I have set before you an open door, and no one can shut it, for you have little strength, have kept my word, and have not denied my name. Indeed, I will make those of the synagogue of Satan, who say they are Jews and are not, but lie, Indeed, I will make them come and worship before your feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown. He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my Elohim, and he shall go out no more. And I will write on him the name of my Elohim, and the name of the city of my Elohim, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my Elohim. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is it. This is your goal. You want to be counted as amongst the church of Philadelphia. This is my personal goal. I want to be of the faithful church. He set before us an open door, entrance into heaven that no one can shut, we keep his word. We have not denied his name. Because we kept his command to persevere, he will keep us from the hour of trial which will come upon the whole world. This is the great tribulation. Many consider this promise to mean he will remove us before the great tribulation occurs, what we know as the rapture. Or many believe that he will not remove, but just protect us during the great tribulation. Whatever way he means it, it's what I want to happen for myself, my family, and for you. This is the church. You must be a part of it, the Church of Philadelphia. This will happen when you make him a priority in your life. You feed on his word as your daily bread. You remove idols from your life. You bear your cross. You do not deny his name. You live for him and are faithful. Please belong to this church. The Lukewarm Church. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14 through 22. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, these things, says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Elohim. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked, I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in fire, that you may be rich, and white garments, that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed, and anoint your eyes with eye salve, that you may see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him, and he with me. To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. This is the final church. 
There is so much I could say about this church that I should devote a whole video to it. In fact, I already have done so. Please watch my message to the lukewarm church. It is very important to understand. It breaks it down completely for you. But in a brief summary, this is many believers of today. They are a mix of the Church of Pergamos, again, the Compromised Church, and this church, the Lukewarm Church. In the Lukewarm Church, you believe in Yahshua, but you also believe in the world. You're hot and cold at the same time. You have faith, but you also desire to obtain the world as well. This is a mixture that makes you lukewarm. The Laodicean Church was wealthy, and it assumed it didn't need anything except for the fact that it was spiritually impoverished. This is many in today's church, particularly here in America. They believe because they go to church every Sunday and are involved in their church. They are found right in the sight of Elohim. They are in fact spiritually deluded. They think they are in need of nothing, but they are in fact poor in faith and spiritually blind and naked. If they do not repent, he is going to vomit them out of his mouth. This is a very severe message. Like I said, please watch my message to the lukewarm church and change this before it's too late because there are many of you that are part of this lukewarm church. Not judgment, just truth. So these are the letters to the seven churches. I've made a chart that I've placed on my website. It will list all the churches, what they were commended for, and what they were criticized for, and the instruction given to them. Again, like I said in the beginning, this message is important to all that believe in Yahshua. The church today doesn't teach on this and leaves many believers feeling that as long as they have made the decision to believe in Yahshua, they are good to go, and they will not have any criticism of their walk. I judge no one. I recognize how wicked this world is and how far deception has taken us away from him. But in the end, it does not matter. These letters are not to unbelievers, but to believers. These letters apply to us all in some way, and hard self-analysis should be used so that you can determine what he is saying to you. He said in every letter to each church, he who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. I'm certain that he will speak to you individually and make known to you what is needed to be known. All you must do is open up your ears and heart. You must hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to you. Do not feel prideful that you got it all together. Don't harden your heart and say this doesn't apply to you. This is very important, and if you believe in Yahshua, this message applies to you. Apply it to your life accordingly and prepare for Yahshua. Time is running out. In the next video, we're going to be talking more about the following chapters in the book of Revelation. It's important that this is discussed because this is one of the most important topics of our lives. So in the meantime, please keep reading and studying on your own and making sure that you are ready for him no matter when he comes. So listen, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please like it and share it. This message needs to be heard by everyone that believes in Yahshua. If you have not already done so, please make sure you have subscribed to my channel. The purpose of my channel is to prepare the bride of the Messiah. I pray that it is. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram. I want to thank everyone who donates and contributes to this ministry. It's because of you that I'm able to spread these important messages and I'm thankful for you. Please be blessed and thank you for your obedience. Thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.